Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Gun Lab. I'm Ian, and today we're here with Eric Kimsel, uh, who is one of the honchos over at Veltor, a company you may not have heard of, but I uh, you know the, the first project where I heard about you guys was the semi-auto PKMs that you built. Well, actually, yeah, we built the PKM receivers for a company at the one time was Wise Light Arms, and then they were sold to through another company called uh, Markle Mar. But yeah, we helped develop the original uh, semi-auto PKM lower receiver, which we still sell the receivers to the general public, just not the semi-auto builds. Okay. Um, and uh, of course, there's still a lot of enthusiasm. Over the last few years, we've probably sold a uh, thousand plus receivers, which is hard nice. to imagine. Yeah, that's more than I would have expected. Exactly. Oh, cool. Well, you're here, um, the, the company, Veltor, is part of um, Abrams? Yes, it is. Abrams Airborne has been around since 1965, mostly as an aerospace uh, manufacturer uh, for the aerospace industry. Um, of course, they wanted to diversify about eight years back or so because of the, um, the NASDAQ or the dot-com bubble collapse. They had to lay off a lot of people here, and so they didn't want to rely on technology or the um, aerospace industry for their uh, bread and butter, you could say. So they want to get into uh, firearms. Uh, of course, they, uh, the Abrams family support the Second Amendment very well. And because of that, they want to get into the firearms industry. And instead of starting up their own company, they just decide to buy an existing company. And they bought my company eight years ago from uh, North Idaho. So. Okay. So you have quite an extensive machine shop or set of machine shops here that we're going to be able to take a look at. Maybe, yeah. Uh, see some gun related stuff. Definitely. Yeah, you'll see uh, this is a 160,000 square foot building and of course we have everything. It's a one-stop shop under one uh, roof. We have cool. uh, CNC machines, uh, lathes, we have uh, uh, plating, painting, um, you know, sheet metal, uh, press brakes, uh, punch presses. So we pretty much try to cover all bases under one roof. So when a customer comes to us, we can deliver them a finished product without going or outsourcing for other uh, processes. That oh, makes a lot of sense. All right, well, let's go take a look in the shop. Okay. All right, come on, guys. All right, so you just brought out one of these kind of interesting uh, new handguards you guys are doing. What are these? Well, we, a few years back, we developed the Viz system. The Viz is a polylithic, uh, or similar to a monolithic upper receiver, where the handguard and upper receiver are one solid piece of material. We actually do a polylithic uh, process where it's actually two pieces of material welded together, and then, of course, we uh, machine the surfaces where the rail is continuous on the top after the welding process. And so what we're doing here, this is actually a, uh, our new system here that we have, we're have introducing in uh, 2013. This is the key mod viz. It's the same as this viz minus the rails and more mounting platform. So what you're doing is you're eliminating the excess weight that's not needed, getting rid of the cheese grater on the hands right all the way around, plus adding a lot more mountable surfaces for future components. Okay. Yeah, you just get to pick where you actually want something and put it there and not have all the other junk that then you have to go and buy covers. For, exactly. Which always struck me as well. Productive. Exactly. So we're excited about this, yeah. and I think so is the industry right now. Uh, without mentioning any names, there's actually um, 12 companies that are going to be offering handguard systems as well as uh, related accessories for the key mod system. Those are major companies' names. You'll definitely see them at the shot show. All right. Cool. Okay. So this is probably one of the cooler things that you guys are making right now. This is your uh, six-shot semi-auto revolving grenade launcher. Yeah, the company in, that's also with Abrams is another company called Milcor USA. And the N32A1 grenade launcher is an uh, uh, improved version of the original MGL-140, which was actually a design that came out of South Africa. But uh, we went through and you can actually see you know, how Voltor and Mil uh, Abrams Airborne has their influence on it through the handguard system, the butt stock, uh, butt stock design, and um, uh, it's a, a weapon that we're proud of, and the Marine Corps now issues, uh, and we're very happy with it, as well as SOCOM. SOCOM it has a similar model to this called the Mark 14. There are some neat features on this that people might not expect. Um, obviously, you can tell the butt stock is adjustable for length, but since this is a grenade launcher, we have an optics mount on here that's adjustable for angle, for elevation, and to go with it, the buttstock is adjustable for angle. Exactly. So you can lift it up so that your, your cheek weld matches, matches the optic. 
Everything in this weapon is uh, pretty much made in this building. We, it has to be uh, uh, U.S. made and down to the optic. We actually manufacture the optic in this building. Some of the components and stuff is very hard to find a manufacturer that can do the glass in the United States or maybe the circuit board or the optic is it's a uh, it's an aim point type of uh, optic that we uh, manufacture here. The only things that aren't actually fully manufactured here are the, the injection molded parts. The injection molded parts like the, the grips and the, the shields and the buttstock, they're done in the United States but uh, by one of our vendors. But everything else is proudly made in this building. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. What you see right here is the rear grip, the rear housing of the grenade launcher. It's stainless steel, sheet metal, and casting construction. You see where the grip would go, and the cylinder and barrel would be out the front here. You'll see the other components around the shop later. So you do the stamping in-house, and then these are casting, and you weld them together, and then machine everything. Around that, from there. Nice. Then we go through plating, painting, or whatever service is needed. I don't think a lot of people would recognize that as the beginnings of a grenade launcher. Not at all. <laughs> Pretty harmless looking. So this is the fixturing setup to uh, do several of the cuts on that receiver. So here's one of the cylinders. This is part. <coughs> this is partway finished. Yes, and pretty much what you have is this starts out as a solid bar stock of 7075T6 aluminum. It goes through three operations. First operation is spinning it down to a contour on a lathe. Second off is the bore. Do the bores that you see here on this side. And the third off is to flip it around this side and actually go through and machine the, the fluting or the contours the outside of the cylinder. And of course, then it'll go through its anodizing, it'll go through its paint process, and it'll go through the final uh, pin and placement for the indexing pin for it to be uh, functioning, uh, functional on the, the grenade locker itself. So okay. as we've mentioned, uh, one of the, the first, actually the first product of yours that really brought Veltor to my attention, maybe I wasn't paying attention, was the, uh, the semi-PKM. And uh, we have a couple bits from that project here. Exactly. The PKM receiver is a, it's kind of a personal uh, love of mine. I wanted to get the gun because I just love that gun so much. And I wanted to bring it into the semi-auto world so we could all enjoy it. And so what we did is we actually uh, uh, reverse engineered a PKM receiver, made our own receiver, and this is what you see here. This is an incomplete uh, PKM receiver. Sheet metal uh, construction, uh, punch pressed, formed, uh, sections welded in, but this is all made in-house. And what you have here is, uh, this is the finished receiver with all the riveted on components, including like the, you see the feed arm, uh, the belly bracket for the ammo can, the trunnion is, uh, is all we're totally riveted in front and rear trunnion, ejector, and the ejection port cover door. So it's pretty much complete uh, minus uh, uh, the paint and the, the finish and everything else. And uh, you guys are actually still making these. I don't think a lot of people realize that. No, no yeah, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say, yes, we do. We have a, a number, of, we're constantly making receivers new because we, you know, we've already sold about 1,000 receivers, but they the came into the country was about 3,000 kits. So the kits are still coming out of the woodwork slowly, and people are still wanting to make uh, semi-autos. Like I mentioned before, we don't offer a semi-auto build ourselves. We just make the receiver. But there are a couple companies out there that are offering uh, semi-auto builds using our receiver and the customer supplied kit. Nice. Yeah, these are slick. These are fantastic guns. Thank you. Well, I, and I agree. The gun itself is just a beautiful weapon. We have one of your, well, one of the PKMs built on one of your receivers, actually. Oh, good. We haven't had a chance to take it out and do a video on it, but we will be in the future. You need to. Yeah. That's a must. So one of the other things you might not realize is Veltor is actually making AUG receivers for the new AUGs. Yeah, we're making the, the AUG or AUG receivers for Steyr Arms in the U.S. 
um, because of course the weapon has to be manufactured in the USA for it to be uh, um, allowed in a um, in a configuration like what they're going with is the AUG A3 which is the latest configuration but what we use is a forging 7075 T6 forging the forging is uh, just like an M16 receiver great grain structure and everything else compared to the original AUG receiver made in Austria which is actually a casting so this is actually a 7075 T6 forging and what you see here this is the first operation machine operation where they actually machine from the front and the back you actually see the bores so, this yeah, is the second operation second operation is the top machine cuts what you see here as well as these ports here and these uh, drilled holes here for the Picatinny rail and the third operation which I don't have right here we hog out this whole bottom face and do all the lightning cuts down here and that's also when we put our marking in which is the the serial number and manufacturer's mark This is our laser department. Uh, in the, our laser department we have two CO2 lasers, two YAG lasers. The CO2 lasers they almost function like a printer almost. They actually have a little drive head and a table back and forth, kind of like a uh, printer on a computer. So you have an arm that travels back and forth X and Y, and then this just goes down the part like a printer on a, for printing paper, and it prints up uh, visible logos, but without penetration. The CO2 is great for just changing the, the anodizing. We're pretty much burning through the anodizing and going to the, the aluminum. And these are, for example, this is just a setup piece that we use. And it shows when we're doing the, the Steyr uh, arms, or, uh, AUG receiver, this is what we use for setup occasionally. But uh, when you see the marking on the outside of the, stog, uh, the Steyr AUG, or AUG, it, um, that's not the legal marking. That's just strictly the marking for their uh, advertising the rifle. The main marking underneath, within the stock line, is actually done on the YAG laser. The YAG laser does a deeper penetration. We actually penetrate about seven thousandths in depth. The ATF law is five thousandths in penetration. We do about seven thousandths, and that's why you'll see underneath the, the receiver after it's pulled out of the stock, you'll actually see Volter weapon systems, um, and we actually do all the marking. So the receiver is actually made by Voltor, but that's a whole other story. But so we use these two lasers for quality and deep penetration uh, markings for um, the firearm receivers, uh, but we use the CO2 lasers behind you just for marking our basic parts, flashlight mounts, uh, charging handles, um, a receiver, just to show what the product is. More cosmetic. Cosmetic versus legality. Okay. Okay. Now we're in the inspection room here. Uh, this is where anything that has to be uh, very precisely measured, checked, inspected, obviously gets done. They have a couple of big, really nice CMMs, uh, component measuring machines. And, uh, and from there, you know, so like right behind you, he's operating a Zeiss um, CMM right now, which is our newest of the two machines. And the other one to the right that you just saw is our Brown and Sharp. Uh, actually, the Zeiss is a lot easier to operate and, uh, and uh, program and what have you. But you can actually see it going through its uh, process right now of doing a job. But the, of course, the rest of the inspection department it still utilizes the basic old true method of, uh, of uh, inspection, which is just everything precise, from measuring equipment uh, to uh, uh, ground, uh, ground gar uh, granite as well as just the top of the line measuring tools. Surface plates and dial indicators. Exactly.